Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Amber Enterprises India Limited Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jaspeer Singh, Executive Chairman and CEO and Whole Time Director of Amber Enterprises India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hello and good morning, everyone. On the call, I am joined by Mr. Daljeet Singh, Managing Director, Mr. Sudhir Goel, CFO, Mr. Sanjay Rora, Director, Religion Electronics, Mr. Sachin Gupta, CEO of RAC Division, and our IR Advisors, SGA. We have uploaded our results presentation on the exchanges, and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. Amber over the years has evolved as a comprehensive, backward integrated, and diversified B2B solution provider. As you all must be aware that we started our journey from room AC sector comprising of window AC and then split and inverters, and further diversified into cassette air conditioners, ductables, and package units of higher tonnages. Being backward integrated over the period, we spread our wings in RAC and RAC components, spreading into different geographies of India. Today, we command 29.4% of manufacturing footprint of Indian room air conditioner industry. To gain an edge over the changing market patterns from fixed speed AC to inverter ACs, Amber in the year 2018 ventured into the world of electronics by acquiring Ilgin and Ever and became a market leader in inverter air conditioner segment. As we graduated in our skills and know-how of electronics, we learned that electronics is an ocean which needs to be explored. In the past five years, a stint which started from inverter AC has now diversified into providing solutions for home appliances, consumer electronics, wearable and wearables, telecom and automobile segments. Recently, we entered in a joint venture with Nextbase Marketing Private Limited, having its brand name Noise, to undertake the manufacturing, assembling, and designing of wearables and other smart electronic products, thus contributing strongly towards Make in India initiative, which will help reducing import dependency, promoting top-tier manufacturing, and positioning India as a global hub for industry-leading wearable technologies across various categories. Being number one smart wearable brand in India and third globally, Noise in-depth understanding of the category combined with Ilgin's expertise in manufacturing, resources and innovative capabilities will help build a world-class manufacturing ecosystem in India while contributing significantly to the burgeoning growth of the entire category. Going forward, we clearly see our electronic division becoming number 2.0 strategy having exponential growth opportunities in the year to come. Furthermore, to expand our addressable market in heating, ventilation, air conditioning segment, we acquired Sidwal during the year 2019 to cater the mobility infrastructure of country, which includes railways, metro, bus, and defense. Sidwal being a pioneer in all indigenous roof-mounted air conditioners for rail coaches, carved out a niche for itself by developing top-of-the-line products over the decades. Post-acquisition, we ramped up Sidwal facilities, expanded R&D capabilities, and enabled Sidwal to cater different applications of metro, railways, HVAC solutions for new age application trains like Vande Bharat Express, metro ACs, and trains like RRTS, Namo Bharat. Today, Sidwal is a leader in mobility air conditioning space and is further turning its wheels by expanding its footprints into railway subsystem space while introducing products like doors, gangways, and pantry system, hence enabling Sidwal to increase its wallet share in 
the bill of material of passenger coaches. With Indian government launching its plan of modernization of Indian railways by launching new Vande Bharat Express, and Urban Development Ministry to have new lines in the new cities and existing metro lines to expand its network, exponential growth opportunities are unfolding for Sitwal. We are currently inching towards finalization of our first global order for Sidwal products, and this division is also set to become Umber 3.0 strategy going forward. We also feel pride in sharing that Sidwal has also been a part of recently inaugurated new RRTS, Delhi Ghaziabad Mirit Corridor journey, to be known as Namo Bharat, where it manufactured air conditioner systems for the train. Looking into the current business and manufacturing landscape change, in last couple of months, we have witnessed the customer demand getting fragmented into various forms like individual components, modular kits, finished products, sub-assemblies. Hence, we at Amber now onwards shall be doing a reporting in three divisional formats. For the sake of simplicity and for our own focused approach, we shall be looking towards three divisional concepts here on. As explained above, all the three divisions, consumer durable, which comprise of room AC finished goods, room AC and non-room AC components. This is one division. Second division is electronic division. And third is railway subsystem and mobility. All have multi-fold growth opportunities going forward. I will now take you through the consolidated financial highlights. On the revenue front, for H1 FY24, Revenue increased by 2.1 percent to INR 2629 crores versus INR 2576 crores in H1 FY23. We have reported revenue of INR 927 crores in Q2 FY24 versus revenue of INR 750 crores in Q2 FY23. In op on operating EBITDA, on H1 FY24, operating EBITDA stood at INR 203 crores versus INR 182 crores in H1 FY23, a growth of 11.5%. For Q2 FY24, operating EBITDA increased to INR 65 crores compared to INR 52 crores in corresponding quarter last year. Operating EBITDA is before impact of ESOP expense and other non-operating income and expenses. Operating EBITDA margins for H1 FY24 stood at 8% versus 7% in H1 to FY23. Fat of H1 F1 FY24 stood at INR 41 crores versus INR 41 crores in H1 FY23. For Q2 FY24, Fat loss stood at INR 6 crores versus loss of 2 crores in Q2 FY23. Increase in depreciation on account of CAPEX incurred and finance cost increase due to increase in debt and higher cost of finance, which led to increase in fat loss. Net debt of September 23 stood at INR 956 crores from INR 662 crores in September 22. We expect this debt uh, number to come down to in the range of 650 to 675 crores by the financial year end. Working capital days for September 23 stood at uh, 52 days, sorry, September 24, uh, compared to 39 days in September 22. And we also expect the net working capital days to normalize by the quarter four. Overall, CAPEX for H1 FY24 stood at 149 crores, and we plan to incur a total CAPEX in the range of 350 to 380 crores in the current financial year. Coming to the divisional highlights, we can now take you to all the divisional highlights. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Jasbir Singh. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Now we can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, coming to divisional highlights, we shall now take you through all three divisional highlights, which are as follows. Consumer durable division. In consumer du durable division, the room AC and the component segment. For H1 FY24, revenue for this division increased to INR 
वन सेवन फोर फोर करोर वर्सेज रेवेन्यू ऑफ वन सेवन नाइन 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 सेवन करोर इन एच वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑपरेटिंग ए बिडा स्टूड एट आई एन आर हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टीन करोर वर्सेज नाइन्टी नाइन करोर इन एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री फॉर परवर्तका वी हैव सेटअप अ न्यू फैसिलिटी इन चेन्नई विच इज इन प्रोसेस ऑफ स्केलिंग अप फॉर अंबर पी आर क्रॉस फ्लो डिवीजन वी आर एक्सपेंडेड इन पुणे विच इज ऑल्सो इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ स्केलिंग अप वी हैव विटनेस द मिक्स ट्रेंड फॉर द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी क्वार्टर वन विच इज यूजली अ स्ट्रॉन्ग क्वार्टर वॉज इम्पैक्टेड बाय अनसीजनल वेदर पैटर्न रिजल्टिंग इन इंक्रीज इन्वेंट्री लेवल्स हाई वर्क Rising temperatures and festivities on the anvil got the demand back and has helped in liquidation of inventory, thereby leading to almost normalised levels of channel inventory. We anticipate a year-on-year -year growth in the single digit for the room AC industry in the fiscal year 24, uh, which bodes positively for Amber. In this consumer world region, we have a motor segment. On the motor segment. For H1 FY24, revenue stood at 135 crores versus 130 crores. Operating EBITDA stood at 13 crores versus 15 crores in FY23. Our profitability was slightly impacted a bit here due to increase of employee cost owing to inflation. However, for motors division, we expect exports to increase in the coming quarters and further expect the industry to grow in the range of 25 to 30 percent. Coming to electronics division, on the electronics division, which includes Elgin and Ever, we have performed phenomenally well. Revenue for H1 FY24 increased to 515 crores from rupees 449 crores in H1 FY23. EBITDA increased to INR 24 crores versus INR 17 crores in H1 FY23. The division has witnessed growth in revenue. operating ebitda as well as pad due to product mix and growth of existing customers during the quarter done by elgin entered into a jv with noise this jv will be 50% owned by elgin and 50% owned by nextbase and will have a new plant set up in noida to begin with elgin will develop local comprehensive integrated solutions in the wearable space and further intend to move into other electronic products This is an exclusive tie-up with Noise, and going forward, this JV will be catering to other brands as well. In FY23, Elgin did a revenue of close to 1100 crores, which included 330 crores of variable segment. With this JV going forward, we expect uh, additional 1000 crores top line by next fiscal year in this JV, and a capex of about 10 to 15 crores, and expect margins to be in the line with it. Further, we have also added customers in telecom, automobile, and wearable space in this segment. As mentioned during our prior discussion, a significant portion of the PCBs required for non-smartphone applications are currently met through imports. The government's commitment to promoting domestic electronic manufacturing offers a significant potential for the substantial growth, and we anticipate a growth rate. of 35% in FY24 for this segment we also expect this division to increase its margin going forward we are targeting an ebitda margin in the range of 6.75% to 7% range and doubling its revenue for over the base of FY24 year year base in next two years time coming to the third division railway subsystem and mobility on the mobility applications the h1 fy24 revenue stood at 235 crores versus 200 crores in h1 fy23 for h1 fy24 operating ebitda stood at 52 crores versus 51 crores in h1 fy23 the division has witnessed growth in revenue operating ebitda as well as pad due to growth in the current operating segments we are adding new product categories for metro coaches which includes gangway doors pantry system hvac system due to our recently announced technology transfer agreements we have started receiving orders for the new product categories and we are glad to share that the auto book of sidwal has significantly jumped and now stands at 1140 crores we expect mobility application division to grow 
to in the range of 25% in FY24 and double its revenue in next two financial years. With this, I will now open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participant present on the audio bridge who wish to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. My first question is on electronic side. So why we have a robust commentary for this division and have also delivered good growth in terms of margins, our top line for this quarter has been quite tepid at 3%, and on a COQ basis, it has been a decline. So since this is a non-seasonal segment, and our historical trend has been quite good, so why only a 3% growth? So that's my first question. Sanjay, would you like to answer this question? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. So this growth uh, was quite new, mainly due to the, you know, uh, muted growth in the AC segment. So like uh, in the electronic division, we uh, supply a lot of controllers and uh, the uh, AC season was quite damp this time. And it also affected the growth. So that was the main reason of the less growth in the electronics. So, so it, would it be possible to give a breakdown for electronics in terms of telecom, here in, uh, hearables and wearables, automobiles and PCBA? That will help. So I think we see that you will have to do. Sir, can you please repeat? We can't hear you. So, do you have that breakup or can we give that later to her, please? Sudhir Goyalji. Sir, Mr. Sudhir Goyal is not connected, sir. Oh. Anyway, Sanjay, we can, we can send it to Natasha later on, the breakup of... Uh, the four segments within the electronic division. All right. Thank you so much, sir. So my uh, next question is on the consumer durable segment. So first of all, has there been any browse, uh, price discounting which you may have taken as an ODM for the brand? Price discounting? Yeah. Has there been any price discounting or any discounts that were passed on to the OEM players? No, there's, there's no par uh, price discounting which we have passed on uh, to any customers. The okay. commodity now has eased off, so that is a quarterly lag basis. I mean, whatever the impact is, that will automatically get transferred. All right. And so lastly, uh, this... Uh, this uh, Ms. Natasha Jain, may we request you to rejoin sure. the queue? Sure. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhruv from Ambit. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, I had a couple of questions. So, first was on the electronic side, just to build on uh, the last participant's question. So, we've seen a tepid growth, and while you've given a guidance of, say, close to 35-40% growth in the full year, right? So, do you think you can uh, continue the momentum? Uh, in the second half, we'll see a better number uh, there or so. Yeah, we have added, uh, you know, new applications in this sector. We have added... Uh auto EV space, we have also added uh, terrible and wearable uh, customers and telecom business which we just onboarded in quarter one has started. So we expect that uh, we should be able to match in the range of 35% growth for this quarter, okay. for this division. Okay. 
and the uh, on the stand alone side we've seen a strong growth uh, however i think sanjay ji made a comment uh, you know that the ac season was tepid so that growth that we are seeing was it on account of a uh, newer customer just just trying to you know connect i think there is a little bit of disconnect in, in that sense so multiple reasons to uh, uh, new customers new applications new products sorry hello hello yeah yes Yeah, and sir, on the, uh, I mean, can you just elaborate a little bit on these uh, new applications per se? So the new applications which I spoke, like uh, we've added uh, telecom uh, sector uh, components. We've also added telecom products in the electronics division. Then we have added uh, auto EV space. Uh, we have added some customers in the uh, in the wearable wearable space. So all these put together, plus there are there are there are some customers which have been added in the. in the refrigerator and washing machine space so all put together is uh, giving us this um, growth thank you sorry to interrupt mr dhruv may we request you to rejoin the question queue for follow up questions please thank you our next question is from the line of sonali salgaukar from jeffrey please go ahead Good morning, sir, and thank you for the very uh, detailed uh, earlier commentary during the call. So, just two questions. Firstly, any update on PLIs, uh, the two that we have received for AC components, and secondly, for next base, you did mention that about thousand crore additional revenue. So, just to clarify, this thousand crore will be for the JV as a whole. So, we'll be uh, taking about fifty percent of that, or fifty percent is equal to thousand crores for us. no the jv sunali will have total 1000 crores and since it's a 50 50 jv we will not be able to consolidate it in revenue it will be a separate revenue which will be booked on the new company and uh, we will be able to consolidate the fat uh, in our region uh, on the 50% part of it uh, as far as your first question is concerned regarding the pli uh, we uh, the pli pros i mean we are eligible in the pli pli audits have started a couple of factories have been visited and we expect uh, that uh, by maybe by quarter 4 we should be receiving our pli benefits start so receiving how, the pli benefits how much incentive we are expecting in fy 2025 if we can uh, you know share that so for the share first year it was it was about 16 crore and uh, this financial year uh, we expect the incentive to be in the range of about 28 to 38 30 crores understood got it thank you sir Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Bharatiya from Investec. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir. So my morning, first question is uh, on the electronic side. Uh, how we look, really looking at this vertical? Uh, uh, would it be an extension of what we have been doing until now, or can it be completely different? A foray into even industrial applications, defense, aerospace, or, or All options open, or are we looking uh, uh, to be specializing in certain fields within the electronics? No, since we have now learned the you know uh, in the electronics space, and we have we are expanding our knowledge base. Uh, so we are very open. We uh, we have taken two pronged strategy. One is to increase our margins because we started with our lowest margin businesses available in the PCBA, which is the consumer durable part. whereas the defense and aerospace and the railways and industrial is a higher margin businesses uh, so we are inching towards that so as you see we started with consumer durables then we entered into telecom then we added wearable wearable and now we have added auto ev space so we will continue to grow in the in the uh, space of uh, pcba applications while increasing our margins and we also intend to backward integrate in the component space moving forward uh, which will strengthen our uh, moat in this division uh, so that that so we are seeing this as a number 2 point of story like what we did in air conditioners we started with manufacturing just a sheet metal a box of air conditioners and then started producing air conditioners and then backward integrated and today we can deliver 70% of bill of material of air conditioners including the full boxes so similar strategy will be followed over the years in this division and we are very excited i think this division has a potential to surpass uh, room ac division uh, in 3 uh, to 4 years time understood sir 
and, and sir, you spoke about, uh, I think, just in our 6.75% kind of margins. Given the kind of mix that we are having today, uh, how are those margins uh, going to be attained? Because I understand that room, room AC or consumer durables is slightly on the lower side in terms of margins. Even possibly variables and variables could, could also be uh, similar margins, or, or is my understanding correct? incorrect? No, you are correct. Uh, the consumer durable space will continue to be uh, lower margin space. But since we are adding uh, new applications, which are at a higher margin, that will that will grow this division's uh, performance to a better margin. And we are we are intending to backward integrate into some components which are at a higher margin space. So consolidated basis, you will see this division going to almost about 6.75 to 7 percent range. When we acquired this company, it was just 2.8 percent EBITDA company, and it's already inching towards 5 percent now. And uh, we'll continue to grow the margins. Thank sure, you. sir. And last bit uh, on. Uh, May we request that you rejoin the question queue for follow up questions, please? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Onkar Budadare from Sri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, good morning. I'm uh, audible, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning. Very audible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question was regarding you mentioned about uh, doubling of revenue from FY24 uh, for electronics division and in two years and doubling of revenue in two years for uh, railway systems and mobility division as well. I uh, just wanted to know what's your long term strategy on both this one since you are mentioning 2.0 for electric. Electronics uh, and railway subsystem 3.0 for Amber. So just wanted a broad long-term view on this two aspects. So broader long-term view is that these uh, division will be uh, heading for a very independent growth and have a potential of uh, becoming as big as Amber is today uh, going forward. So it is very simple strategy which we have opted. We we actually acquired into adjacencies and then we have grown. Uh, those divisions into various applications. In electronics, like I have explained, that we have already entered into four applications. Now we have we are adding some more applications in that. Plus, we are going to backward integrate into component space of the electronic PCBA part, which will help us both top line growth as well as the bottom line growth. In the in the uh, Sidwal, the mobility division. Uh, when we acquired this company was a small company uh, uh, and uh, the beta margins were also less so we've already traveled a journey in next last three years from 16 percent beta to almost 22 percent beta and uh, grown the top line by almost uh, three times in last three three and a half four years uh, what we are going to do next is that uh, today we are contributing only four to five percent of the bill of material of the passenger car now, if you if you can imagine uh, the kind of orders which have been floated by the Indian Railways for new Vande Bharat Express trains, and also by the Urban Development Ministry, which has already shortlisted 25 new cities to have new metro lines, and the existing cities having metro lines are going to expand its network. There is an opportunity, huge opportunity, which has come uh, for the complete railway application passenger coaches which is called rolling stock. So in rolling stock, if you see, we currently are giving a solution of only 4 to 5% of our bill of material. So we, to become a meaningful supplier in the whole railway subsystem, we've now ch charted our growth story for getting deep dive into the bill of material for increasing our wallet share with the existing customers. Now, how do we do that? We, we uh, started forging our uh, you know, alliances by signing technology transfer agreements. We have done two TOTs, one with Taiwanese company and another one with Canadian company uh, for doors and gangways. And we have developed pantry systems. So today we can offer 10% of bill of material in a passenger car to a customer. So from 4%, we have reached to 10%. And moving forward, we are going to further do some more alliances. And uh, we, we wish to reach to 25 to 30% of offering becoming a multi-product company in the railway subsystem part. So within India, there's a huge growth opportunity. 
there is a growth opportunity in the global space as well so we are excited with this complete growth opportunities coming for this division and uh, by forming alliances by TOTs for JV we will reach to a 30% offering of a bill of material in next 2 to 3 years time and that's how we are very confident that we can double the revenues from current levels and also increase some margins just one number I wanted uh, for FY23. What's the revenue? What was the revenue of electronics division, and what was the revenue of uh, railway subsidies? You can provide that. So FY23, so FY23 revenue of uh, electronics division was uh, 1100 uh, crore plus, and uh, for Sidwal it was 422 crores. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Arafat from Incorrect Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so my first question is on CapEx. Uh, so last year you invested almost 70 odd crore rupees, and this year also you guided from a 50 odd crore rupees investment. So I just want to know which are these areas you will be investing. Of course, it will be... It's a non-AC, more about a yearable and variable. But again, if you can guide on that, and again, what asset turn you're expecting with a longer term with this investment? So we will be investing in uh, all the three divisions. Largely, investments are happening in electronics division and uh, the mobility division. Plus, okay. uh, it, this complete uh, 380 crores includes the maintenance capex of all 27 plants. It also includes the R&D capex. Uh, and uh, some new products which are we, which we are developing uh, for the uh, room air conditioner division. So in total, we will be reaching uh, currently. We on the return side, as as guided in the markets earlier, also we will repeat. Last year we have done uh, last financial year we we've, we've done about 15% ROC, and we expect ROCs to jump to about 16% plus this year. And uh, as guided earlier, uh, we will again maintain that guidance that we should see Umber uh, and a console basis delivering a 19 to 21% uh, ROC in next two to three years' time. Okay, okay. And my next question is on, again, now on the PCBA side, let's say you are now have the AC, PCBA, refrigerator, television and all. Is there any plan to enter, like you said, high-growing area like AS1 Defense, and medical and that matter. So any plan to enter that segment heavily, sir? Certainly there is a plan to enter into various uh, applications of PCB. If you, if you actually strip down the uh, availability of the PCB applications, almost about eight to nine sectors are prevailing. So first of all, on the bottom line point of view, the top bottom line contribution is aerospace and defense, and then comes the railway, then industrial, uh, then uh, telecom sector, then automobile sector, then healthcare sector is there, then wearable, wearable, and consumer durable. So we've started our journey from consumer durable appliances side. We are inching uh, into adding some new customers, uh, new applications. We'll continue to do more applications um, on, in this division. It will take time. Defense and aerospace is a little longer time duration because their uh, testing periods time, validation assessments takes long time. Similarly, is the case in the industrial and railways. But yes, we have initiated our processes. Thank you. Mr. Arafat, may we request you to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions, please? Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Aniruddha Joshi from ISEC. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so thanks for the opportunity. Sorry to interrupt, uh, sir. May I request you to mute your line after you are done asking your question, please? Sure. Uh, is it okay now? Yes, sir, please go. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, uh, now we are seeing uh, most of the brands are setting up their own uh, facilities. So do you see any... Uh, impact on the industry and on us, uh, considering there will be likely excess capacity in entire uh, air conditioner as well as components uh, manufacturing. Also, uh, what is current industry capacity versus what is it likely to be, let's say, after one, one and a half year, when most of the new plants will uh, come on stream? And uh, what is uh, Umber's strategy to tackle the 
steep increase in industry capacity as well as the likely competitive pressures that may emerge post this uh, capacity yeah that's it from my side so the brands basically uh, started investing in their own capacity from uh, year and a half back and uh, most of them have started their facilities uh, only two customers are pending to start their facilities probably i think in q4 and one customer will start and uh, by f25 one japanese customer will start so the dust has already been settled with this landscape change of uh, complete uh, insourcing versus outsourcing by some of the brands and uh, we have already aligned uh, in tandem to their strategy towards moving into more component supplies rather than uh, finished goods supplies and we are seeing some benefits out of our strategy which we focused on uh, moving forward i think uh, there is no more announcements coming up from any brands for putting up new facilities uh yes you are right uh, industry will sit on a little bit over capacity for uh, maybe 2 to 3 years time uh, because recently anybody who puts up a factory they will don't put up a factory only just considering year or two years time it's a, it's a good horizon which they take so for coming 2 uh, to 3 years time we will have we will be seeing a over capacity in the industry uh, but our strategy is to supply them components which our brands have started so whichever company started their factories we are we are giving them components uh, from various geographies uh, whether in north west or south we have plants all over place and we can deliver 70% of the components which goes into air conditioner our wish list is that everybody buys all those 70% but had that been true we would be sitting at 70% of our market share but today we are at 29.4% of the manufacturing footprint of ac i think we are excited by the growth of this uh, whole sector in the last 5 years uh, the room ac volumes have jumped from 4.2 million to 8.5 million it has doubled and in next 5 years also there is expectation of more than doubling uh, than this so we expect 8.5 million number to go to 20 million number and exports are also starting from happening from india so for amber it is a manufacturing footprint which we see as a addressable market where we think that uh, you know there is a lot of growth even maintaining the market shares which we have we should see a decent growth coming out of this region okay so sir uh, very helpful thank you thank you our next question is from the line of adesh from motilal amc please go ahead Mr. Adesh, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Mr. Adesh, may I request you to unmute your line from your side? As there is no uh, response, may we move to the next question, please? Our next question is from the line of Renu Beth from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, team. Uh, my first question is to understand that while uh, we have embarked on pretty aggressive growth in uh, both mobility as well as electronics business, um, as a company, uh, what are we doing to build capabilities with respect to teams, people, and what kind of capacity expansion in your view is required to uh, double uh, these revenues in the next two years? That's the first question. We knew the. Uh... divisions are already headed by professional ceos and they have a complete team in place as we are expanding our uh, um, you know applications uh, we are uh, enhancing our team strength at the senior level as well as at the bottom level and uh, to increase this is happening at the both the divisions and uh, also uh, you know and we are taking proactive approaches because we we know which division which applications we are entering into so there is a proactive approach on the team strength which is happening and the few of the members have already joined in on the on the capex side uh, sidwal uh, is bringing up will be bringing up a new uh, plant uh, uh, moving forward to since already we have entered from single product category to multi product category now we are giving solutions not only in air conditioner space but for the doors and gangways and pantry systems and moving forward we are also entering into further components in the railway subsystems 
so there will be definitely uh, greenfield expansion and brownfield expansion both happening uh, and uh, in both the divisions moving forward uh, so any uh, capex that you have broadly outlined at this point in time even if it is slightly rough so in terms of broad estimates Next two years, capex. Uh, uh, so, in in Indian, if I talk about, I think uh, the capex outline is already there because we are a PLI participant, so we are doing capex in that. We will be doing about seventy five to eighty crores capex in Indian and ever, and uh, uh, we expect uh, small, light, slightly lesser capex this year in Chidwal. But since the applications are getting addressed by next financial year, maybe next financial year. Will come up with one greenfield facility, sure. which will include about a capex of close to about 80 to 100 crores next year. Okay. Um, within... Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Renubed. May we request you to rejoin the question queue, please, ma'am? Sure. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nero Vasa from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Hello, sir, and thank you very much for the opportunity. My question pertains to the debt part. Sir, as I look at in Q2 FY24, the gross debt of the company is close to 1450 crore rupees. Uh, wanted to understand what can be our peak working capital requirement as we get uh, in the peak summer season, and how do we? Because this gross gross debt to equity ratio is quite close to our net worth of no, almost 1956 crore rupees. And since we have aggressive plans going forward as well, how do we intend to fund them? So one is that uh, uh, you are seeing from the gross debt side, we have uh, close to about 400 odd crores sitting in uh, investments in fixed deposits and bonds. So net debt is a uh, little less than a thousand crores. And uh, uh, as explained during my commentary, that we expect this debt to be in the range of uh, 650 to 675 crores by the March end. This is a general trend in our industry. And this year, because this was a very poor season for air conditioners, a lot of inventory was piled up, which uh, was supposed to be paid on time, and hence the debt got increased. But as the inventories are getting liquidated, it will come down. But uh, uh, so internal crash accruals are very strong. In, in, if we see from Next two years perspective, as we have uh, guided that uh, there is a likelihood of uh, doubling our revenue in two divisions and uh, the percentages are also getting increased. So internal accrual is good enough for uh, catering to the uh, you know needs of the capex requirements of the con of the of the company. Uh, sir, any based on the current scenario and the growth rate that you are expecting for the domestic room air conditioner industry, would it be possible for you to share any kind of volume number that you are targeting for uh, domestic air conditioners and how and what can be the number for exports that we can look in terms of volumes in the forthcoming part of the year? Thank you. See, I can talk about the industry as such because, uh, you know, our landscape has shifted because we are largely now supplying components, sub-assemblies, semi knockdown kits and uh, room air conditioners as such. I think an industry did about 8.5 million last year. So we expect the uh, industry to be in the range of 8, 9 million this year. Uh, if, if all goes good by quarter four, it all depends on how the summer season spans out to be. So we expect a single digit growth in the room air conditioner sector, um, at least in this financial year. I mean, uh, Q1 was a negative uh, by 20, 25%, but we are seeing some makeup being done in Q3 and Q4. So I think industry should be largely flattish or maybe in a single digit growth kind of a category of the room air conditioner part. But we've added some customers on the component side and uh, we expect to outnumber the industry by a few percentage points as we've always done. Uh, that, that's our view on the industry of room air conditioner part. On exports front, uh, there's a, a big, uh, there's a shift which is happening, we are seeing some multinational companies shifting their geographies to India, and they have started uh, testing the waters right now. And uh, we we are seeing uh, the export number, which was happening only one lakh uh, air conditioners were getting export exported, has come to almost about five and a half lakh. So this number is also going to go up as the multinational companies 
uh, will shift their geographies uh, to India to cater to Middle East and South African markets. Uh, as the scene has been uh, in the mobile case, I think uh, this number will also add up to the manufacturing footprint of India. And uh, because we, for us, the addressable market is what is getting manufactured in India, whether for domestic market or global market doesn't impact us. Plus, overall, Umber is also endeavoring on its own uh, for export uh, opportunities. We are we're very hopeful to receive orders for our first uh, finished goods category in the uh, quarter one of the fun next financial years. So we've already crossed uh, some customers' validation assessments, and now the Bureau of Energy applications are going on. Once we clear that, we will see first orders coming in from next Q1 of the next financial years. Thank you. Mr. Neerovasa, may we request you to rejoin the question queue, please? Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhishek from DSP. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just a couple of questions. First is uh, you called out this uh, consumer durable, you know, top line to almost double in a couple of years from FI24. Uh, how should we look at the mix in terms of the, the PCBAs, in terms of the new areas which you spoke about, industrial railways, defense, what can be the contribution from that or will it be largely from the current segment that you're doing? No, Abhishek, uh, we've guided that uh, the electronics division and the mobility application division, which is railway subsystem division, Sidwal, both uh, are likely to double its revenue in the next two years' time. Uh, and uh, that, the reasoning is very simple. We are adding uh, new applications, new product categories, new customers, and we are uh, also and deep diving into the bill of material of more passenger cars. So earlier, as explained, we were just giving 4% of the uh, bill of material of a passenger car, which was only air conditioner as a product category. But now we are we have entered into multiple product categories, which orders have also started flowing in. And that's why we are very confident of uh, achieving uh, the doubling of revenues. So, sir, my question was that this new product, which you're adding, what can be the contribution of top line when you double it uh, in next two years? Will it be like 5-10% or can it be meaningfully higher? Is what I was trying to understand. Sir. No, it will start with smaller number. Normally, because these are very technical oriented products, so customers will not give you 100% of share of business on day one. So we've started receiving orders. Our supplies will start going in for next financial year. So next year, I would say the contribution should be about 10 to 15%. But the... Two years from now, the contribution will be almost as big as 35 to 40 percent. Got that. So, major portion of growth will come in from new products. Just in That's right. Yeah. And so, just one other thing is in terms of your gross margins. Uh, we see some improvement there, both on standalone and console. So, how are you looking at the overall competitive scenario, uh, uh, commodity inflation? Uh, just some comments that will be helpful, sir, in terms of the gross margins. As far as right now, if we see, uh, see the scenario, uh, commodities have more or less settled and eased off, so we don't see any big spike coming in from commodity cycle. If, if it does so happen, you know, we've uh, demonstrated in past also that we are able to pass on to our customers on a quarterly lag basis. So uh, because we are entering into um, better profile of products category moving forward in uh, in electronics and in uh, mobility applications. So on a control level, there should be seen, some some margin improvement should be seen. Thank you. Mr. Abhishek, may we request you to rejoin the question queue, please? Our next question is from the line of Madhav from FIL. Please go ahead. Mr. Madhav, please go ahead with your question. May I request the management, we move to the next question as there is no response. Our next question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Just wanted to sort of answer. Mr. Deepak Krishnan, may we request you to use your handset, please? Yeah, I'm on handset mode. Can you hear me fine? Yes, now we can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to sort of understand the weakness in uh, the motor segment margin this particular quarter. What was the factor that we back to single digits after, you know, sustaining at double digits for a long time? Uh, 
uh, in the motors division, it was particularly because we sold more of a BLDC motors, which are a lesser margin businesses, and our export shipments did not happen the way we anticipated. So that's the reason why a small dip. Uh, but uh, I think the double-digit numbers are maintainable for this division. For the full year, we should be back to double digits. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of overall inventory, given how Q2 was and maybe early part of festive season, how do you see the AC market evolving? Just Q2 and Q3, any sense of how the market trends have been so far? Market trend, uh, as I explained earlier, I'll repeat it again. It's basically what we are seeing is uh, mixed signals from uh, various customers. Some of them are sitting with uh, inventory. Some of them have been able to liquidate them. Uh, and uh, and some of them have uh, liquidated some models, but some models are stuck. So overall, if I talk about the industry level, uh, industry is heading towards a normalized inventory level. By I think by Q3, we should be able to, uh, by end of Q3, we should be able to see a completely normalized inventory levels. So we should start Q4 at a good note. Thank you. May we request you to rejoin the question queue, please? Our next question is from the line of Ms. Alok Deshpande from Noama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, two questions. Uh, first, on the electronics uh, division, uh, you mentioned about the growth and the margins. Uh, this is a, if you could give us some sense on uh, what can be the uh, you know typical working capital dynamics going forward, what would be the asset terms of this? That is question number one. And secondly, any outlook that you can give on the motors uh, part and the strategy there beyond this year? Uh, hello, can you question, uh, repeat your second question? The first one was the electronics division. Second one was? On motors, sir, motors. Uh, the strategy going forward on motors beyond this year. Okay. So uh, on the electronic side, the networking capital days, uh, they're not much. I mean, the asset turns are pretty good in that division. We uh, the asset turns are as good as about 11 to 12. And uh, ROC is in that division is in the range of 26 to 27%. Networking capital days will be in the range of about 20, 20 25 days. So we expect the it, it, it should be in the same range moving forward as well. And um, uh, on the motors front, uh, what we are doing is we are opening our global doors as well as we have entered into industrial and commercial application of uh, air conditioners. Uh, we have started giving motors for VRV applications, for ductables, for package units, for fan coil units, etc. That's uh, uh, also moving positive for us. And plus, of course, in the room air conditioner division, we did not have BLDC motors, which we have now been able to successfully launch. So uh, this is one part of the strategy. Second part of the strategy is we are entering into washing machine motors and uh, chimney motors. Uh, probably next year we should see some orders coming from washing machine sectors also. Sir, uh, any, uh, any chance that growth will accelerate in motors? Yeah, we expect uh, decent growth in next year. I think uh, if all goes positive, uh, we should see a uh, growth rate of about uh, 30 to 35 in, percent in the motor space uh, over this year, next year. Understood. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Adesh from Motilal AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Um, sir, in Sidwal, we are seeing that your current order book is around 1100 odd crores. Sir, um, any uh, sense on where can this numbers settle over the next two to three years? Well, I mean, a lot of activities are going on in that division, so uh, very difficult to give you a number, but, you know, uh, it, it, if, if our global doors open, which we are uh, likely to open, uh, it can be a substantial number to add up uh, to this number, but we, we can't give that number right now. I think uh, that's why we have guided that uh, uh, we are confident of doubling the revenue in the next two years. Uh, but yes, that, that division is heading towards a very growth, robust growth moving forward. Right. So, sir, doubling of revenues will be from FI24 base or FI23 base? No, 24 base, current year base. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhruvesh Shah from GM Financial Asset Management. Please go ahead. 
Hi, sir. Um, so my question is with respect to uh, the new expansion that you are making that is into the EV auto uh, space. Uh, can you please uh, describe or to speak two lines on it uh, as to whether it is a two-wheeler, four-wheeler, uh, where exactly, what domain exactly are you planning in that space? And what is the right to win uh, versus that of the other peers? Thank you. We have uh, cracked uh, four-wheeler EV first, and we have not become the tier one. We have become tier two supplier right now. And uh, we are adding uh, two-wheeler uh, EV also very soon. I think probably by quarter four, uh, we should be able to add uh, two-wheeler also because that's a very focused segment for us. Um, what we are offering uh, uniquely is the geographical spread as well as our R&D capabilities, which we have built over the last five years. So that's a, that's a uniqueness which we are offering. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have plants in North India, West part of India, and in the Southern part of India. So that's helping us in this strategy. Understood. Uh, are we in a position to name any clients? Uh, no, that's uh, NDA been signed. That's a company sensitive okay. information. No problem. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhananjay. Bagrodia from ASK, please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Congratulations. The 10 numbers. Just wanted to ask you between the room AC and motors, what would have been the split this quarter? So, room AC has been uh, uh, on a control level, it has come down to 40%. And uh, uh, just number wise, what would have been, let's say last quarter was 1242, what would have been this quarter? Uh, sorry? Let's, last quarter it was 1242, room AC, what would have been this quarter? I don't have the number right now. Um, Satin, do you have the number with you? So, then, Anjay, what we'll do is we'll send you the numbers. Uh, okay, sure. On. And so, uh, just to clarify, what would be a capex for this quarter then? Uh, for this year then? What is going to be a capex for this year? So, this year we've guided that we will be in the range of uh, 350 to 380 crores. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Jasbir Singh for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining on the call, and I hope uh, we have been able to address all your queries. Uh, I think two queries have not been addressed, which we'll be sending you separately uh, to the Nanjay and uh, to Natasha. Uh, for any further information, kindly get in touch uh, with Rohit uh, or SCA, uh, our Investor Relations Advisors. Thank you very much and have a good day ahead. Thank you. On behalf of Amber Enterprises India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line.